Ah, I didn't see you there because I was playing Pokemon Blue on an IPS screen and my god does it look good. But there's something missing and that's because the screen is not big enough. So in this video I'm going to be installing the RIPS V4 Super OSD version. This is a backlight kit for the original Game Boy and it is much bigger than the previous version which was the V3 version. And what is good about this kit is you could buy it as a fully true drop in replacement with no soldering required. And I have the perfect Game Boy for this kit. This Game Boy is actually missing the screen and the buttons. The reason for this is because this was a buy up mod gone wrong and I actually repaired this Myself, which you could check out the video in the top right. And because I brought the full kit it came with its own shell and there is a good reason for this and I'll go over them now because if you don't have this shell you'll have to make some modifications to your original one. So on the right I have an original and on the left I have the new one. So the screen cutout for the new one is a lot bigger than the original one so there will have to be some adjustments there. Not only that but the contrast area needs to have a bigger cutout and over on the other side there is a little area a little notch that needs to be cut out this is by the marking for the power supply this needs to be removed completely and that is the only shell modifications you need so let's move over to the screen itself for some reason my screen already came attached to the board we'll need to remove this later however for now let's just flip this over and stick the sticky back adhesive onto the screen I'm gonna cut it up into two strips and put them on then if you want to put it in the bracket we just need to peel these off and then we could stick it into the bracket however we need to remove that board like I mentioned earlier so we can just use a flat tool and just pop it off with this board removed we can now easily put the screen into the bracket so let's do that now as you can see the cable from the screen lines up with the cutout on the bracket the next thing to do is the board we just removed we also need to put some sticky adhesive on here so i've cut one to size and let's put that on with that on again we could peel it off and then stick it to the rear of the bracket making sure to line up the connector with the cable so you kind of want to sit it slightly above and not flush to the bottom of the bracket once in place we could fold over the cable and push fit it into place and there we have it the screen is fully assembled into a little module so let's grab the front half of the shell and i actually want to put this in first to prevent any dust build up so to do that i'm going to grab the glass screen i am glad it does come as a glass screen because it is really really nice compared to plastic ones and as you could see the cutout for this particular lens is slightly bigger so let's remove the adhesive on the back and also remove the adhesive layer that is blocking the screen and of course mine doesn't come off properly so I'm gonna have to <laughs> I'm gonna have to try and fiddle this to get this out it should come off as one piece but mine didn't there we go being careful to not get the cover stuck at all let's place this down and stick it onto the shell this way because my shell is facing down no dust should be able to get on it which is great so now removing the protective layer on the screen we can then put it in the shell and this should be dust free completely which is why i'm doing this first and how where that where did that even come from what on earth let's get rid of that with that gone like i said it should be dust free so let's just pop it into the shell now that the screen is in place we need to put in the buttons and rubbers so can you guess which hand i have the buttons and rubbers in well, it was my right hand. Did you guess right? Let me know. Let's put in the buttons first and then the rubbers with a small little montage. If you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. What truly makes this a drop-in replacement is the speaker comes pre-installed if you purchase it. If not, you could just solder it in and that's the only soldering required. What I find amusing is all the silk screen, the down left right up B A is upside down. Perhaps that's just me. There's also no other markings to represent this as the Game Boy Rips kit when there was in the previous version. Moving back to the Game Boy, let's put in this new board and screw it into place, making sure that the cable does poke through. So starting with the speaker, this is the first thing you want to put in place and then you want to make sure that the wires fit into the shell. We can tidy this up later, so don't worry about it too much. Once the board is in place, we can then connect up the cable by lifting the locking tab and then inserting the cable and then re-locking the locking tab. Now that we are here, this is a good time to adjust the speaker cables to make sure it all fits in the shell. Now that the board is in the Game Boy, we can secure it down by putting the Phillips screws in all of the bottom holes of the board. And that is the front half of the Game Boy completely done. Now we need to take out the failed bivert boards from the original Game Boy. So let's remove all those screws so we can get to these boards.
Taking these boards out of the original Game Boy, we can then get the new shell and then screw it into place. Once that's screwed into place in the new shell, we can now attach it to the front half of the Game Boy with the provided cable. This is quite stiff and some force is required, but it will fit. You may need to bend your cable in order to push it in. And as you can see, I've actually folded the cable here to make it easier to install these two halves. This bit is a bit tricky to get on camera, but I've tried my best to give you the best angle. But this will also be stiff, attaching it to the new front half, and you may need to bend your cable in a few places this doesn't damage the cable and is okay to do once the cable is fully inserted and won't go in anymore we can then push down on the rear half there will be some resistance because it's a brand new cable and then we could put in all the screws into the rear of the case not forgetting to remove the battery cover put the screws in there Now that this is fully assembled, we can remove the protective cover from the glass screen lens and not forget the dust cover for this connector port. But before we test it, one last thing I want to do is take the original serial sticker and put it onto the new shell. So to do this, I've got some liquids that I will apply. If you want to know what this liquid is, in the top right, I've done a video on it and you can see more results there. But once this is applied, the sticker will start to peel off once you get a good grip on it with ease without damaging the sticker or anything else. Sometimes this can take a little bit of time to take effect and you may need to apply a bit more. But in my case, I did not. And as you can see, the sticker slid off nicely. Then once you've given it 30 seconds, it will be sticky again and you can just stick it straight onto the new shell. Now this is complete. Let's put in some batteries, put on the battery cover, whack in again, and then we can make sure everything works and check out the new features with this V4 kit. Turning on the Game Boy for the first time and surprisingly, it's only a little bit bigger. We're talking like three millimeters or something. And yet it's really noticeable. So as you can see on the right is the bigger screen and on the left is the smaller screen. There also seems to be a slight hue difference there in the brightness. But as with all kits, there is a brightness adjustment and everything, all the menus are done through the contrast wheel. So let's turn down the lighting and see how bright this screen is. I'm now turning it down to the lowest brightness settings and then I'm going to turn it back up to the highest. Probably won't need it to be on its brightest, that's for sure. So let's turn back on the lights and check out the other features that are present in this kit that weren't in the previous one. Holding the contrast wheel in for a bit, you then get the on-screen menu, which has many settings. One of the settings is the pixel effect. When you turn this on, you will get a nice grid that gives it this retro look. It doesn't look the best on camera, but in person, it does look quite good. Personally, I prefer to have that off. Another setting is the battery display, which is great because now you can have in the corner a battery display of roughly how long you have left to play. Not only do you have these options, but you have a V and H position that adjusts where the screen is in case you misalign it slightly. I only need to adjust mine just a little bit to make it fit perfectly. And lastly, one of the probably the coolest features is the color adjustments. This allows you to color four separate sections to whatever color you would like. So this is the color one option. Let's just change this to be white blue. As you can see, it has adjusted the background and various other bits to be blue. The color one section is currently the gray section that you see on the Game Boy. So let's change this to a nice red so you can see where color one affects. As you can see, it's affected the Pokemon logo and a bit on the trainer. Moving over to color two, currently this is the black bit as you can see from the Pokemon logo. And I'm going to adjust this to a nice green so you can see everything it affects there. And finally, we have color three. Must admit, I'm not quite sure where this affects in the Pokemon game, but it's another option and you could play around with this also. And with this, it gives you full control to play original Game Boy games in whatever color you would like. Admittedly, I didn't pick the best colors. This looks a bit funky, but the point is you could do whatever you want. And with that, that is complete. That is all the new features that the V3 did not have. And I must admit, I really do like this kit. It is a true drop-in replacement. The price is well worth paying. And if you get it with all the shell, there is little work needed other than just assembling the Game Boy yourself. Although the screen is only a tiny bit bigger than the original V3 rips kit, it is definitely noticeable a lot more than I thought it would be. And I would highly recommend using this kit over the V3 unless you're not interested in the color options of the grid. I know for myself, I'm gonna have a blast spending many hours to adjust the colors to be perfectly how I want them to be, which was something not possible in the V3 kit. But please let me know your thoughts on this kit and how easy it was to install in the comments down below. 